green peppers. You either like them or you don't. When I was young, I admit I didn't like them very much. They tasted bitter, and so I would peel them out from a pizza slice or when I saw it on salads. But as I grew older, I began to appreciate green peppers and enjoy them now, not only in pizzas or salads, but in fried rice, in minced meat, or in pasta. So welcome to Journey to Hydroponics. In this video, we shall concentrate on growing green peppers. The kind of green peppers I have is the conical variety, which is a common variety where I live, and they do taste like bell peppers. I'm getting my seeds from a green pepper that has ripened and turned red. I leave the seeds on the napkin for a day or two until the seeds get dry. Get your coco peat, which has been moistened with water, and microwave it for about 3 minutes. You can also use boiling water instead of a microwave, and once the moist coco peat has cooled, spread it on your seedling container about 2 inches deep. I'm using a microwave container where I've placed drainage holes using a soldering iron. Spray the coco peat with treated water and distribute the seeds. Cover the seeds lightly and spray the coco peat once more with your treated water. The treated water I'm using in hydroponics is tap water that has been left in an open container for one day to release the chlorine. Then I place weights on the coco peat, which puts a little bit of pressure on the coco peat so that the seeds are snuggled in it. Next, place the seedling container inside a box to germinate the seeds in darkness. In about 5-7 to seven days, take out the container and you should be seeing the start of the seedling bud. You can now expose the whole container under your grow lights and place them about 1-2 to two inches below the lights. By the way, the lights I'm using are four rows of T8s. It's 18 watt LED daylight that is equivalent to 2,200 lumen and has over 6,000 Kelvin. Do bottom feed the seedlings with your treated water. The goal is to keep your coco peat moist. In my environment, I usually bottom feed every other day. On the 17th day, or when you see four leaves begin to pop out, you can bottom feed now with nutrient solution. The formula is the same as with the formula for basil. I have placed the video link in the description below if you want to know how to mix your master blend nutrient solution and get its formula for leafy vegetables. On day 21, you may now transplant the pepper to its final container. I'm using a 2-liter jar and a 3-inch wide net cup. If you don't have a net cup, make one yourself. Here is a 2-liter orange juice container. I cut the top off that is about 4 inches deep. Then, I use a soldering iron to place holes on the side and on the lid. I also placed aluminum foil on the containers to prevent light from passing through and creating algae inside. Get your seedlings and carefully loosen the sides so you can lift up the seedlings. Try not to damage the roots. Then I use treated water to help me separate the seedlings. Fill the net cup with coco peat and place a hole in the center big and deep enough to hold the seedling. Pick up the seedling and transfer it. Then, pour in some water to compact the coco peat. Since the roots are still short, I fill the nutrient solution a little bit over the edge of the net cup to moisten the coco peat and roots. You will notice I also place stones and clay balls on top to prevent algae from growing on the surface and the weight also helps stabilize the seedling. You may continue to grow the peppers under your indoor lights, 
but I prefer to use the balcony where I can place the seedlings under the sun. Green peppers prefer around 6 hours of sunlight, but they are alright in my balcony, which gets only afternoon sun. When growing indoors or outside, make sure you check the level of your nutrient solution. As the roots get longer, the nutrient solution is placed 1 to 2 inches below the net cup so that the top half of the roots can have air while the bottom half of the roots are drinking the solution. When the plant is about 8 inches tall, mine happened on the day 47, it is recommended to prune the plant on the top. Cut it about here. Pruning makes the plant concentrate on growing more branches, which brings about more chances of more fruits. Let me show you an example of a pepper plant that has not been pruned. It's too leggy and the few branches give out few fruits. But when you prune, this is how the plant looks like. It took longer for the branches to come out, but it's worth it. More branches mean chances for more fruits. About 80 days, the flowers begin to appear and after a few more days, the buds of the conical variety begin to show. You can harvest the peppers when they are green, full-sized, firm, and shiny. But I like to harvest mine when they begin to turn red, which happens around the 100th day. When the peppers are red, they are not as bitter as when they are green. The good news with green peppers is that they are indeterminate plants. This means they continually grow new stems and leaves, even after harvest. Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching Journey to Hydroponics and hope you stay tuned in this channel for more videos. Take care.